Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guy. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at beacons. Since we defeated the Wither a few episodes ago, but we have not yet had the opportunity to discuss what this strange block is and why it is so important that you need to fight one of the tougher bosses in the game in order to obtain it. In order to activate the beacon, we're going to grab some resource blocks, and we're going to do this with iron blocks here, but you can also do this with gold blocks, emerald blocks, diamond blocks, or blocks of netherite, which are actually <laughs> so difficult to acquire at this point that I have not gotten any here in my storage system yet. Given that we are currently farming iron and have been for a while, however, iron blocks are going to be probably the cheapest to come by. And of course, you can dig up iron from huge iron veins in your world and you should be able to come away with enough blocks to light up one of these beacons. So we're going to start by placing a 3x3 three three of iron blocks here in the center of this grassy open area outside of our base and you'll now see that we get an advancement for activating the beacon for the first time and if we right click on the interface here you'll notice the beacon highlights a set of powers that we can have for each tier that we build of the pyramid supporting the beacon block in this case we have only built one tier here with a three by three of blocks just nine iron blocks here will get us either a boost of speed or a boost to haste, which is actually a mining speed increase. We need to activate the beacon in order to take advantage of this effect, however, so we need to feed it an iron ingot, a gold ingot, a diamond, an emerald, or a netherite ingot. Naturally, that final option is going to be a massive flex and will completely waste a netherite ingot considering that you can very easily activate a beacon with renewable resources like emeralds and iron. In fact, there's ways you can farm gold, which we will be looking into later in the series. So naturally, in this case, we have this many iron ingots. We're going to use an iron ingot for that, and we're going to give ourselves the speed buff. You'll also notice that a secondary power pops up here, depending on which of the primary powers you pick on the left-hand side, but that's something we'll be able to get into once we have built up the beacon a little more. For now, we're going to click the green tick mark here, and as you can see, we now get a speed buff. I'm actually moving a little faster. I can even switch sneak a little faster now and this speed buff is permanent while you are within the beacon radius in fact if you look in your inventory you'll notice it gives you 10 seconds of speed so that 10 seconds would last even if you ran away from the beacons radius but it refreshes every few seconds that you stand within the radius of the beacon now i'm talking about the radius of a beacon but the effect actually applies in a square shape centered on the beacon block itself and extending vertically to the build height. So if you think about it as a radius that extends from the beam of the beacon itself, and is basically a square column rising into the sky. That's more or less what we're dealing with here. And at first level right here, the effect is only going to last for about 20 blocks. If I get more than 20 blocks away from this beacon, we should see that speed buff start to decrease until it goes away entirely. Where is 20 blocks? It's going to be probably about here. Yep, there we go. As you can see, the speed increase is now ticking down. I haven't even made it most of the way to my storage room here. And there we go, the speed buff has worn off. Once we step back into the square of the beacon's effect, though, the speed buff should return, and we can effectively get the speed buff this way whenever we want it, just by stepping into the radius of the beacon, and then we can run away <laughs> as far as we can possibly get with our additional speed buff before the whole thing wears off. Now, speed is, of course, an effect it's possible to get by other means. You can take potions of swiftness in order to gain a temporary speed buff for a much longer duration. And and honestly, if you want a speed boost, a beacon isn't the most logical thing to get it from since you probably want to be running in a straight line and you're running away from the radius of the beacon's effect. So naturally, of these first two choices, haste seems like the more appealing one. Haste will increase your mining speed beyond what is possible even with efficiency tools. And that stacks with efficiency, meaning that some blocks which you are unable to instantly mine in the same way that you can, leaves or netherrack, for example, become instantly mineable. But but that depends on the block itself, and we'll deal with that in a second. For now, though, we're actually going to remove the beacon from here and activate level 2 by building up a 5x5 beacon base with a 3x3 on top of it. And we're simply going to expand this beacon base of iron blocks every time until we end up with the full pyramid, and we can discuss all the beacon's effects. Now with the tier 2 beacon, and it does need to be solid all the way through, you can't skimp on the blocks underneath the game, we'll know. 
With a 5x5 topped with a 3x3 of iron blocks, we activate the second tier of the beacon's primary powers, unlocking Resistance and Resistance 2 as a secondary power, alongside Jump Boost and Jump Boost 2 appearing in the secondary powers as well. So those two are pretty self-explanatory, really. Resistance, as the shield icon would indicate, gives you additional defense against anything that might damage you. It's kind of like having an extra protection enchantment that, once again, stacks with the protection that's already on your armor. And the thing about resistance is that the beacon is one of only three places you can get hold of the resistance effect, and it is one of only two that have no downsides. <laughs> the third is a potion that you can brew called the Potion of the Turtle Master. And we haven't acquired any turtle shell helmets yet, but once you bred turtles, acquired the scute items from them, and crafted those into a helmet, you can actually use the helmet as a potion brewing ingredient to brew a Potion of the Turtle Master, which gets you a high level of resistance, but also a high level of the slowness effect, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. Aside from that and beacons, the only place you can get resistance from is by eating an enchanted golden apple, one of the rare items that you cannot craft, you can only find them in loot chests, and we brought about six or seven of those back from a recent ancient city raid, so we have a lot of them right now, but they are naturally a finite resource, so getting resistance from a beacon seems like an attractive prospect, and we can level it up to a second level of the effect with resistance 2 over here. Jump boost is also available as a potion effect. You can get that by brewing a potion using a rabbit's foot, which again, I don't think we've done yet in the series, but there are rabbits around the meadow biome here, so we could go and get those if we choose. And like other potion effects, jump boost has a three minute or an eight minute potion duration, or you can upgrade it to jump boost two for a shorter potion duration, but a more intense effect. And jump boost when activated allows you to jump an additional half block per tier of jump boost. So in this case, this would be enough to allow us to jump over fences, let's say. So in this case, I could jump over the sniffer paddock fence into the enclosed area without it being a problem, without needing to have a carpet or a trap door over there as a style. But I can't jump up a full height of two blocks. I could only do that if I had Jump Boost 2 active. Once again, we're going to deactivate the beacon and build up a third tier. So this requires a 7x7 base, a 5x5 on top of that, and a 3x3 crowning the entire thing with the beacon placed in the center. I should also add that each time we increase the number of tiers of this beacon, each time a level is added, that also increases the range of the beacon's effect. So in this case, we can still choose from any of the now five primary powers here, and we're going to pick strength. For example, strength is much the same as the potion effect, so you won't find yourself using this on beacons all that often unless you want to place a beacon by a mob farm where you are swinging to deal damage and take out the mobs. But the beacon's effective range extends by 10 blocks for each tier of the beacon you add, so you can still have one of the base level effects like speed or haste, but they will apply in a 40 block radius now instead of a 20 block radius. And I can now stand here inside the front door of my storage system and that strength effect is refreshing. It also ends up lasting for a little bit longer with each additional tier of the beacon. So now it's refreshing to 14 seconds of that strength effect. I think technically it's 15 seconds of the effect because it also counts the timer ticking down from one to zero before the effect wears off. So overall it's 15 seconds and it just immediately ticks down to 14. But either way, we now have access to all of the primary powers of the beacon having built it up to tier three and we could get any of these within a 40 block square column centered on the beacon beam. It's also worth noting that that range of the beacon's effect also applies below the beacon for the same number of blocks. So for example, if you were to get 40 blocks below this beacon right now, we would run out of the strength effect. But if you were, you know, up to 38 blocks or so below the beacon block itself, then you'd be able to still maintain the strength effect. It would wear off if you dug any deeper. So this means to take maximum advantage of the full height of a beacon beam, you should basically place it as low as possible in the world and allow the beacon beam to travel upwards. Unfortunately though, the beacon does need access to the open sky in order for the beacon beam to become active, and if we place a solid block over the top of it, it blocks the beacon beam and now that effect is going to go away. You'll hear the noise disappear and the effect will eventually wear off. However, the beacon still maintains the effect that you had before, so if you remove that block, the beacon's beam will reactivate, 
and the effect that you've chosen previously will return. You can also put transparent blocks over the top of a beacon beam, which bizarrely an ender chest also counts as, because it's not a full block, it would allow light through and would therefore allow the beacon's beam through as well. And with blocks of colored glass, it is even possible to change the color of a beacon beam. I'm gonna grab a couple here for example. If we place a blue glass block over the beacon's beam here, it changes the beacon's color to that deep blue. You can also do this at different heights of the beam itself. So if we place the lime stained glass in here, it will make the beacon's beam green, but only above the point where the glass block interacts with the beam itself. And if we wanted to, we could put a piece of stained glass in there, and that would actually change the beacon's beam before it reaches the green stained glass, and a combination of the two colors rises out of the green block, which is kind of an awful brownie orange color because of the way those colors combine. It's also worth noting for the scientists out there that this is the primary colors of pigments rather than the primary colors of light. So you cannot combine red, green, and blue to to make white. If anything, it makes this odd kind of purplish black color, which is not the most desirable color, I will admit. But one fun thing that's worth noting here is that while the hitbox of the glass remains in place, I can't walk through this. <laughs> there is a glass pane in the center of there. The glass pane's model does end up concealing itself neatly within the beam of the beacon. So it's kind of cool to be able to hide that inside there and not have a really obvious glass block on top of the beacon, changing the beam's color. Further up there, it does seem like the beam's color actually ends after a certain point. So I'm going to fly up to that point and see if that's just a rendering thing, which it looks like it is at this point because I'm above the build height and I'm not getting any closer to that point. Wow, <laughs> no, we're pretty high up here actually. So while it might look like the beacon's beam is changing color above a certain point, that's just the distance fog, the kind of thing that gives the distant terrain in the game a little bit more haze. And with certain mods like Optifine or Sodium's advanced settings or something, you might be able to simply turn that effect off and see a blue beam rising infinitely into the sky. Now let's set up a tier four beacon. Let's go all the way and see what additional effect that grants us. The fourth tier of beacon requires a nine by nine base of 81 blocks with 49 blocks in a seven by seven above that, 25 blocks in a five by five, and finally nine blocks in a three by three at the top. And then the beacon can be placed in the middle and that will get you another advancement for fully powering a beacon. So bring home the beacon and beaconator can be acquired at the same time if you just build a tier four beacon to begin with. But as we can see here, we have now unlocked both primary and secondary powers from the beacon, and this is where the beacon's full strength comes into effect. The effective range of a beacon is now 50 blocks, extending from every side in a square around the beacon, and we also get the effect for up to 16 seconds on the timer, 17 seconds in reality. And in addition to choosing one of these primary powers, we can also choose a secondary power, which is either to upgrade the primary power to the second tier of effect, or to add regeneration on top of that, giving us, in this case, both speed and regeneration while we're within the area of the beacon. And regeneration works exactly the same way the potion does. You'll see the hearts pulsing down there above the hotbar, and while you're within the radius of this effect, even without full hunger, you'll be able to heal any damage that's been done to you. Naturally, potions have the edge on the beacon in this case, though, because it is not possible to get a regeneration 2 effect from a beacon, and additional beacons built nearby will not stack these effects. So you can't end up with a higher level of regeneration. Regen 1 is all you will get, which is why it's often a good idea to take advantage of the secondary powers second tier ability because having speed 2 over speed is going to grant the player a lot more speed. Likewise, resistance versus resistance 2 means that you're going to be defending a lot more damage. But it's really where haste comes into play that the beacons truly shine, because haste is not an effect you can get anywhere else in the game. There are no potions of haste, there are no tools that grant you the haste effect, and while obviously we're used to mining with efficiency at this point, haste stacks with efficiency. And the most important thing to know about this, if we dig down a little way around here and we reach the stone layer is that we are now able to insta mine stone. So if I hold down the left click button, I'm able to mine stone with the same speed that we would mine netherrack in the nether with a diamond pickaxe. And that's something that isn't even possible with the haste one effect. I'm going to put haste one and regen on here. I'm going to wait for the haste two to wear off so that we can demonstrate this. There we go. So now I just have a regeneration and haste renewing in the radius of this beacon. And now 
I'm not mining anywhere near as fast as I was a second ago, because haste 2 is what takes us over the line between stone having a very short time to break and stone breaking instantaneously. Which is why one of the chief reasons a beacon is a desirable thing to have is because of that haste 2 effect, because now we can acquire cobblestone and stone blocks much faster than we would be able to otherwise. Remember in the previous episode where I said I didn't have a great deal of cobblestone? I went mining for a little bit more of it. We spent maybe an hour and a half on stream gathering cobblestone and other resources, and I only really came away with a handful of stacks. Now with this beacon, we should be able to get enough to fill a double chest within a matter of a few minutes. Of course, this does mean we have to take the beacon with us, and that's the primary downside to an effect like this, is that we will need to pack up all of these blocks and the beacon and bring them with us anywhere we want to set up the haste effect, since it only has an effective radius of 50 blocks from the center of the beacon. So we can't now go insta mining elsewhere in the world without taking the beacon with us. There are now 164 iron blocks making up the beacon base, that is the precise amount you will need to make a tier 4 beacon anywhere, and iron blocks do take quite a while to break. In fact, if you're able to acquire 164 gold blocks, gold blocks do break slightly faster than iron blocks, which does make them a slightly more usable block for beacon bases once you have enough of them, but obviously right now they are fairly difficult for us to acquire, not having any kind of gold farm in this world. I will dip into my resources here to quickly demonstrate that it is possible to build a beacon base out of the other resource blocks though, and that you can mix and match the resource blocks if you want to. I'm going to build a little beacon base here in the center of my storage room, which I think is going to center on this block here. The leaf block above and the water should not prevent the beacon's beam from activating. And we're going to make that out of a few diamond blocks, but also some iron blocks here. We'll place the beacon in the center there. The beacon's beam should activate. There we go. It will shoot up through the leaf block and the water. And as you can see, that has activated the first tier of primary powers. So a combination of resource blocks, even if you don't have enough to create a full beacon base, you can use a variety of them in order to make this happen. Just bear in mind that obviously you're putting your valuable stuff out here in the open in regards to the diamond blocks. If we fly out of here though, you'll see that the beacon's beam now rises gracefully from the farm at the center of my storage system, and I think we might actually fully center that so that I can build the beacon base inside that central area, and that will resolve the problem of what I was going to put there. As long as there are only transparent blocks on top of that, it will have no problem reaching the sky and delivering the beacon effect radius. So we're going to bury a beacon in the floor down here and make sure that that leaf block is moved over by one block so that the beacon's beam can come up from the center of the room. But right now, however, we're going to take the beacon base down again. We're going to deposit the diamond blocks back in my storage system because I don't plan on bringing those with me. We're going to bring exactly 164 blocks, which if you're looking in your inventory is going to be two stacks and 36. You will also need to bring one activation item to activate the beacon with, but we are going to take this to an area where we can go mining for stone. And since we already know that there's a pretty substantial amount of deep dark biome below this mountain, we're probably going to go a little bit further afield just to be safe. I think we can set up a quarry of some kind down here in the place in the valley beyond where our home mountain is. And I think what we're going to do is dig on down through here until we reach the layers just above deep slate level. We're going to dig down in the safe way, the way I like to do it, by standing on the join between two blocks, digging out one side and then the other, and then hopefully we should be able to dig down to an acceptable height to set up our beacon. And we're doing this in such a way that means we don't end up falling into a lava lake or any caverns that have generated below this point. So we're going to dig down to a height of Y8, that's going to be eight blocks above zero where stone starts to transition into deep slate and there we're going to set up our beacon base. Well that led directly down here into a little dripstone cave although it's not a massive cavern so there's plenty of stone in the surrounding walls and this seems like a good place to set up a little mining outpost. So naturally the first thing we're going to need to do is dig out an area large enough for the first base of the beacon. We need that nine by nine area and it will need to center on this shaft of light that we've dug straight down into this level with because because the beacon will need access to the sky, so we'll need to place that centrally inside of here, meaning that in the center we're going to place a column of four iron blocks, we're going to place the beacon on top of that, and that way we can make sure that that is the center of our mining operation. From there we simply need to dig out four blocks in every direction, square those off, and connect everything up with a base of iron blocks. Oh, and look at this, we've managed to dig into a very small vein, it looks like, of stone diamond ore. Yes, there's a couple in here, very happy to have obtained that. Oh, and there's another one hiding in the granite up there. Perfect. While we're down here, it's also worth noting that the beacon itself is a light source block. It will emit light level 15 in the same way that lanterns and redstone lamps and glowstone and other blocks do. And while we're setting up the beacon base 
here, I will note that it doesn't matter if any other blocks are surrounding the beacon base, as long as you make every tier of the beacon base out of solid resource blocks in the five materials that are given here as the activation items for the beacon. Remember that this doesn't include things like redstone blocks, lapis blocks, or copper blocks. So I'm sorry if you were hoping to activate this beacon with all the copper blocks you've got lying around. Unfortunately, the beacon won't activate using those. But having built up our full beacon in here, you can see the cave wall is encroaching in the beacon's area, but that's totally fine. It will activate the secondary power. We don't need to dig out a full 9x9x4 area in here. We now have that haste to buff. So we can use this haste effect to create what is known as a strip mine, where we simply destroy all of the blocks in this area, claiming all of the resources that we want to. And in this case, we're going to take it all home in shelker boxes, where it will be added to our storage system. Obviously, you can use this effect to look for precious resources as well, like the diamond ores that we just found while we were digging this out. So you might still find some diamond ores in the stone layers. However, it is much more likely that you're going to find diamonds and redstone and other precious resources like that further down in the world, where unfortunately we will have to stop our insta mining because despite the haste 2 effect being able to insta mine stone that way, you cannot have the same effect apply to deep slate. Deep slate is simply too tough of a material to be broken instantly, even with efficiency 5 and haste 2. Which is actually one of the reasons I decided to moss mine out the chunk of the mountains that we did in that recent episode, even though I had just acquired the materials for a beacon. Although honestly, a hybrid method of digging out a chunk would not be too bad because at least in digging down with a beacon, you would get to keep all of the stone and other resources that you found and not have them all convert into moss. And then once you reach deep slate level, doing the rest of the job with moss would make sense because you can insta mine moss once you've converted it from deep slate. If you're digging out an area like this underground, make sure you end up lighting the area up every so often, because you'll find that when you walk away to the other side of your dig, you'll come back and find that monsters have spawned here. In addition to that, you may find that slimes start spawning in these areas, especially if you're digging below wide. 40 because anywhere below there you have the possibility of encountering a slime chunk a specific chunk of the world where the game has decided slimes will generate if there are any caves and effectively what we're making here is a large cave plus slimes can spawn in any light level in these cave layers so the amount of torches we place around here are not going to have any effect on that however it can be really useful for locating slime chunks since slime is a precious resource usable in some redstone components so we might end up using this technique a little bit later to find a slime chunk without having to look up the location location of one using online tools. Either way, look at this, we've now got ourselves so much cobblestone and a few extra decorative stone types besides. We're now looking at starting our second shelker box of material just so we can take it all home. Like I said, we've been able to acquire basically a full chest of cobblestone or equivalent resources within minutes. Now we've only just begun to dig out this area, but for the moment I'm going to grab this beacon and we're going to take it elsewhere. I will leave my beacon base here since we have an adequate supply of iron blocks back at the base. And I'm going to mark the surface here to make sure I know where this gap is that leads down to our new beacon mine. Let's simply do that with a pillar of diorite here on the plains, which is definitely going to stand out enough that I will notice it in future. Because despite not being able to help us instantly mine deep slate, there are a bunch of other resources throughout the world which benefit from the effects of a beacon and having haste mining ability is going to make us a lot happier when it comes to gathering these resources. In fact, you can already see where I've done a little bit of mining here, although not with a beacon. Terracotta can be instantly mined by using simply the haste one effect available on a tier one beacon. So we're going to set up nine blocks of iron and a beacon and be able to mine out a bunch of terracotta from the side of this mesa. Although when you're setting this up, it is worth bearing in mind that a tier one beacon like this, while it's small and is only going to require haste one, for us to mine out this resource, it's going to provide the smallest possible beacon radius. So when we end up stripping out all of the terracotta from a 20 block distance from the beacon, we're going to run out of that haste effect if we go far beyond that, which means it's sometimes a good idea to bring a larger beacon base, even if the effect isn't necessary, just so you can mine with a larger effective range. Naturally though, this is going to greatly expand our ability to use terracotta simply because we can get hold of so much of it so quickly. And naturally this would have been so useful when setting up my storage room, which is why I mined out that giant area of terracotta in the first place, because we needed a lot of green terracotta for that build. And in the time it's taken me to explain that, we've gotten ourselves nine stacks of terracotta, which is really not bad. But now let us consider that the overworld is perhaps not the only dimension where the haste effect could be useful. Because the nether portal that leads directly 
32 hour base is right here in a basalt delta, and basalt is a stone type block that takes a little while to mine out by hand, but both basalt and blackstone can be instamined with different tiers of the haste effect. Basalt can be mined out using haste 1, and blackstone can be mined out with haste 2. So if we set up a haste 2 beacon in here, we could clear this area as quickly as we cleared out that area in the cave layers of the overworld. Of course the major problem here becomes how are we going to get a beacon beam that goes all the way to the sky considering that the nether is a cavern? Well, about that. While the nether is a cavern, and if you get high up enough in the nether there is a roof of bedrock that prevents you from going any further, with conventional means at least, once we're up here in the nether ceiling and looking at bedrock, we can find a place where the bedrock is less likely to have any additional netherrack blocks generating behind or within it. I'm going to pillar up here a little bit and check that, yeah, that looks like solid bedrock below the area that we dug up through. And if you want to destroy any netherrack that might still be lurking within here, you can place a block of TNT which will destroy the netherrack blocks through diagonals and corners, and that might potentially open up an area where the netherrack is generating behind these bedrock blocks. But if only bedrock is between you and the sky above the nether ceiling, then you are in luck, because the beacon's beam can actually travel through bedrock blocks in order to have access to the sky above the nether. And if we are lucky enough that that is the case here, I might be able to set up a beacon base centered on that area with bedrock above it, place a beacon, and the beacon's beam can travel all the way through to the other side. And now if we activate this with an emerald, we get haste, and we should be able to instantly mine out the basalt around this area. Now naturally, I would advise caution because there are lava lakes everywhere in a basalt delta, so you're going to be mining through to some patches of lava. Fire resistance potions are probably a must in that case, but it is possible to activate and use a beacon in the nether to clear out specific types of blocks. Unfortunately, there is no combination of haste and efficiency that will allow you to instamine the nether brick blocks of a nether fortress, but it's a really neat thing that we can still bring beacons to the nether and use them. Finally, it is worth noting that even if haste doesn't allow you to instamine a block, it will still reduce the time to break of most blocks. So while it isn't possible to instantly mine obsidian or endstone using haste in the same way that it is with other blocks in the overworld, it is possible to reduce the amount of time you spend mining out a patch of obsidian. So if we were to set up a haste 2 beacon here, the sky of the end will give no resistance to the beacon's beam effect and might even blind a few endermen in the process and it will even allow you to mine out one of these obsidian towers faster, saving you a fraction of a second for each obsidian block, but considering the amount of obsidian and how slow it is to mine, that will really add up to a significant time save. So naturally I've been dwelling on the haste effects here because they are simply the ones which are the most useful from a beacon, since they're the only one that can only be acquired through a beacon, and there are of course plenty of other effects that you can play around with. If you want to have a permanent regeneration and speed buff or jump boost while you're around your base, you can set up a network of beacons spread out at 50 or 100 block intervals to make sure that those effects will last as you walk between the radius of one to the other. There is so much we can accomplish now that the beacon is part of our arsenal, this is just the beginning. But that is where we're going to leave this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this look at beacons, hopefully you understand a little bit more about how to use them, where they can be used, and honestly, the sky's the limit at this stage. Thank you so much for watching, my name has been Pixelriffs, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care, bye for now.